The Phoenix Suns are going into this next season with something to prove, and I think that they are in the just perfect situation to be able to prove a lot of people wrong. And although the expectations for the Suns are high, I don't think a lot of people really understand how good they can actually be. And I think a lot of people are even losing faith in them, which isn't completely unwarranted because they have fell short of expectations year after year for a while now. But I do think that this year is different, and I have a few reasons why. So if that does sound interesting to you, please watch the video all the way through. And if you like your point, like button, subscribe, and mean the word. Me. Without ado, without more too much, just get right into this video. The first reason why I think they're a lot better than a lot of people are going to expect them is because, I mean, they have a surplus of star talent. The first thing you need to be able to win a championship or at least compete at the highest level is have a lot of star talent on the roster. And the Suns probably have the most star talent out of anyone in the NBA. They have an absolute surplus of it. The supply has met the demand, okay? Like, it, it is there. They have reached their limit. As they currently have a legitimate all-star level shooting guard in Bradley Bill, who is an extremely, extremely good shooting guard and is probably a top 10, top 15, no, definitely top 10 shooting guard in the entire NBA, maybe top five, arguably. And he is a two-time player who has scored 30 points per game in a season. And it shows you just how offensively talented he actually is. Then they have another all-star level player in DeAndre Aiden, who although does get a lot of flack, he is still solid. He's a 20.10 rebound guy in the regular season. And although he does struggle to produce the same at the playoffs, he's still a very above average center that any team would like to have. And that being your fourth best player on your roster is an extremely good fourth best player and then they have even Devin Booker I don't even think you have to really argue with Devin Booker is legitimately a top 20 top 15 player in the entire NBA and he may be the best shooting guard in the entire league he's one of the most unguardable players he's very good with the ball in his hands is just probably the best shooting guard in the entire NBA and then obviously leading the entire thing they have a top top five player in the NBA in Kevin Durant he's I mean I don't have to explain to you who Kevin Durant is okay he is the snake from the other dimension he is an absolute beast when he has the ball in his hands and he is the most unguardable player in the NBA at times as well the only problem with having the star talent is a few things one their chemistry is probably gonna be pretty rough because I mean they're adding Bill they have to learn how to play together Kevin Durant was only there for like I think half the season and Bradley Bill has never played a game with them and they got a new head coach so I think they are gonna have some growing pains going forward but I do think that they will be able to figure it out I mean talent oh, usually trumps most things and that is what they have most abundant of and the only thing I'm really worried about is I don't know how Bradley Bill and Devin Booker are really going to play together because Bradley Bill and Devin Booker are kind of the same player. They both like to have the ball in their hand. They can both self-create very well, and they just really strive off of getting hot by their own hand, and they don't really do much passing. So unless, I think Bill probably needs to be more of a point guard that can score, and I just think it's going to be kind of weird how they're going to work together, but I do think, like I said, they're going to figure it out over time, and like I said, most of the time, talent does trump most things, and hopefully their talent can hide some of the holes that they have when it comes to their play styles kind of clashing together. And then even outside of the headliners of the star talent like these big name players in my opinion they fixed their biggest problem their biggest problem was not lack of star power they still had chris paul booker durant and deandre aiden on the roster last year like the reason they didn't win the finals last year was not because they had no stars far far from it actually their biggest problem was the fact that they literally had no death on the roster outside of Cameron Payne who didn't even play that well outside of Cameron Payne they basically had zero bench and that is a huge problem when you're trying to win the playoffs I mean look at a team like the Nuggets the Nuggets have two star level players and one of them is the best player in the NBA probably undebatably at this point and Nikola Jokic and then Jamal Murray is a top 10 point guard in the NBA so yes their stars are very high level stars but so are the Suns but the biggest difference is one they have extremely good chemistry but two, they are an extremely deep roster, which all like one through eight, one through seven, who whatever, however deep they go on a certain night are all very competent players that can produce. And that is exactly what the Phoenix Suns tried to address and fix this offseason this year. As in free agency, they went out and signed Kate Space Diop, Yuta Wanami, Drew Eubanks, Eric Gordon, and Bull Bull. Now, yes, those names may not sound stellar to you, but I'm going to explain in detail why I think all these players are going to be great additions to this Phoenix Suns roster. The first player I'm going to begin to is going to be Kate's base Diop. Now, Diop was last year playing for the Spurs, and he just had his best year of his career last year in three-point percentage and points per game, and he's just an extremely good 3 and D player. And he's just one of those very versatile players that you can put almost anywhere on the court, and for that to be a guy coming off your bench or maybe being your starting small forward however they want to do the lineup, this guy is going to be an extremely valuable player for them because he's coming from a Spurs organization where although they haven't been the best team the last few years, they still have Greg 
Popovich on their team, and if you play on that team, you're going to play the right way. So he knows how to play the right way. He knows how to play winning basketball, and he has shown that he can be a productive player when giving the opportunity. And being six foot eight, he's also able to defend multiple positions on the court. So anytime you can get a very solid three and D guy, it's going to be very, very fun to watch. And on top of that, I think he's only like 26 years old. So it's not like he has to worry about declining or anything. He's actually probably going to get better as he enters the prime of his career. So I think Diop was a very underrated signing for the Phoenix Suns and is going to go a long way in helping strengthen them in the long term when it comes to the playoffs and needing depth. And then the second person they went and signed was Yuta Wannabe. Now, Yuta Wannabe is probably one of the lesser known, lesser known, lesser is not a word, Cody, lesser known guys in the entire NBA, or at least in terms of this free agency class. But Yuta is an absolute sniper from the three-point line. He shot 44% from the three-point line last year. And anytime you can add floor spacing to a team that has DeAndre Aiden, Kevin Durant, Bradley Bill, and Devin Booker, that's going to make it just that much harder to guard and make the team that much more dangerous. And in today's NBA, you can never have enough three-point shooting and on top of that, you don't want to be isn't short or anything. I think he's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, or something. So he is also a fairly versatile player and also not the best defender, but he can still at least have the enough size to not get bullied when he gets switched on a bigger guy. Now, I know I just said Yuta's probably the least known name in this free agency class, but now we're going to Drew Eubanks. And unless you're a just NBA fan like me, you probably don't know who Drew Eubanks is that well. But Eubanks is actually a very underrated solid backup center. Now, I know it sounds like I'm a Suns fan and I'm just trying to like call, hype Drew Eubanks up. But no, I'm a Pelicans fan, so don't think that's what I'm doing. But Drew Eubanks legitimately has solid potential as a backup center in this league. As in the 2021 through 22 season, when Portland kind of was going through their growing pains, he averaged 14.5 points per game, 8.5 rebounds per game, and was also very efficient at that, and he is only 25 years old. So for a backup center to have the potential to score you 10 plus points per game and get you almost 10 rebounds per game as well is extremely, extremely intriguing. And like I said, for how young he is, he's only going to get better, and he's going to learn from being behind DeAndre Ayton, and he's just going to keep getting better and better. And I think Eubanks is a very, very solid backup center. Now, I don't know how much better he makes them because they did lose Jock Landell, and I think Jock Landell was just as good, if not better, than Eubanks, but he's going to be a very big piece in filling that hole Jock Landell left, and I think he is actually maybe even going to do it a little bit better than Jock. So I think overall, the Phoenix Suns were able to fill a hole that they lost in Jock Landell. And then the second to last guy they signed in this for Agents class was Eric Gordon. Now, Eric Gordon, although far from what he used to be in his prime, he is still an extremely solid veteran scorer that can get you around 10 points per game off your bench. And when you're in a big game, he's not going to fall away because he's been playing for championship containing teams for a very long time at this point in his career. And he just knows what to do. He's a veteran that's played on good teams. He knows what to do. He's going to fall in line and he's just going to do anything you ask him to do. And that's a veteran that you love to have on any contending level team. And I think Eric Gordon was a huge get from a leadership perspective and maybe even a production standpoint in the big games when you need your bench to step up. And now the very last guy in the this class is Bull Bull. Now, Bull Bull last year had his first chance really since joining the NBA to actually play minutes in an NBA game. And in the 33 games that he actually got to start for the Magic last year, he averaged 12.5 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, 1.1 assists per game, 1.4 blocks per game on 57% shooting from the field and 36% shooting from the three. And mind you, he is only 23 years old. And at seven foot two, to be able to shoot a 36% clip from the three point line is extremely valuable. And he's still a very good shot block as well. Now, yes, I know he has his flaws, but if you're telling me a 23-year-old 7'2 center who can space the floor, dribble, and have very high offensive upside while still being a solid rim protector and rebounder doesn't have potential to help this team out, I don't know what to tell you. He just does. He's going to get better than he was even last year. I just think overall, Bobo is going to be a great addition. Is probably the highest upside guy in this entire class, and I think could actually propel the Suns much higher than a lot of people expect. Now, I'm not saying Bobo is going to be a star or anything, but I think he's going to be a very high-level role, role player for them this year, and he's going to actually make an impact in some big games, assuming he can stay healthy, as that's been the biggest knock on his entire career so far. But overall, from them adding even more star talent to an already star-studded roster, to them fixing their biggest hole, I think the Suns are just going to be a lot better than even some people think, and I think they're going to legitimately have a very good chance of winning the NBA Finals once again, and I think this is the best shot they've had in a very long time. But unfortunately, guys, that's the most of this video. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Suns are going to be better or worse than people think? On your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like, point to the like button, subscribe button, and the absolute world to me. And I hope you have a blessed day. Could I have a blessed day? So you need to have a blessed day. All glory to God. See you next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah.